Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to create the best class setup possible for the brand new DLC SMG, which is the Fennec. And you'll unlock this organically within the battle pass that just started with season four at tier 15. So once you play enough time, you'll be able to get this weapon, unlock it. So what we're going to cover in today's video is the various recoil patterns for some of the different attachments. We're also going to take a look at his damage profile for its base ammo, as well as his hollow point rounds, and then compare the damage profile with that of the MP5, which is one of the more dominant SMGs within the game. And we're going to compare it for both multiplayer as well as Warzone, So you have an idea of where it's going to fit in the meta. If you do enjoy the video or find it helpful in any way, please do me a favor of hitting that like button. A goal on this video is 2,000 likes. These do take a lot of time, and I do appreciate you guys' support on those. If you're looking to find your way back for more Call of Duty content, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. We also just started a Discord. We have 500 members as part of that. It's completely free to join, and it's one of the first links down in the description. Let's go ahead and talk about the recoil pattern. Normally, a lot of times people like this part of the video because you can kind of figure out what each attachment does and if they're even worth using. So we have the base recoil pattern here, and you can see it kind of just goes up and slightly to the left, but for the most part, it's primarily up. It has an aim down sight of 234 milliseconds, and that is the zero measuring stick there. If we go with the hollow point rounds, you can see it basically has no recoil and that's because it ends up being a two shot burst the same way the striker was and you get the same scenario where it ends up being two bursts that are fairly close together and fairly tight even at further ranges we got the muzzle brake on it and what you can see here is these little green dots are basically a copied one of these first recoil patterns so you can use that as a comparison and i basically started the first bullet right behind it so you could see them lined up and you can make a judgment call muzzle brake you can see it's helping out a little bit a little bit slower aim down sight we have the ZLR Saber, um, which is an integrated suppressor, a lot like the monolithic suppressor. Uh, it ends up giving you a little bit more range, so I don't know why you'd want to use the monolithic suppressor. Um, but overall, it looks like this one's helping out as well. It's kind of helping out a little bit on that end. It will slow you down by one frame, which is very comparable to the monolithic suppressor. So it's definitely a great option for that option. Uh, we have the compensator. You can see the compensator looks like it's helping a little bit apex barrel there's actually two different barrels that you can choose from this is the base uh one without the integrated suppressor which we'll go ahead and talk about you can see it's helping out a little bit and then the deadfall barrel it's going to slow you down quite a bit but this one does have the integrated suppressor so it kind of combines the effects of having a monolithic suppressor or maybe the zlr saber with the apex barrel so you kind of get that combination that'll make more sense where you get the integrated suppressor save an attachment and this one reminds me a lot of the monolithic integral suppressor so that'd be kind of the comparison even though this weapon is just a tad slower than the mp5 we also have the merc foregrip but you can see it's helping out Plus, obviously, you get the bonus of that hip fire accuracy, which is a huge bonus for the Merc foregrip. Commando doesn't look like it's almost doing anything, so I would avoid using that one. Even though there's no ADS penalty, it kind of seems like a waste. Operator foregrip looks like it's helping. Ranger looks like it's probably helping out the best in terms of vertical recoil. So if you want to reduce that as much as possible, you don't care as much about hip firing, you can go ahead and make sure you go with the Ranger since it only has a one frame penalty. Rubberize definitely looks like it's helping. So I'd probably try and stack a couple of those together. If you're liking to have lower recoil, definitely go that route. And you can see the nose stock will increase your recoil, but it will speed up your aim down sight time. So it's a little bit more in line with the MP7 and the MP5. When we get to the all around class setup, which we're gonna show off in today's video, you'll kind of have an idea of what this looks like. And then you can see it is a little bit slower than the base, but it doesn't end up with some terrible ADS speed. It might feel a little bit average or maybe hairline slow for an SMG, but it's going to be significantly faster than most of the rifle class setups in Warzone and even in multiplayer. And then we have more of a mobile class setup. You can see it's still getting a little bit of frame penalty, but we're swapping out one of those attachments for the no stock attachment, which you can see increases the recoil, but will also help out your mobility, which really isn't feature featured here. I'm not really talking much about mobility. More people end up caring more about aim down sight speed and recoil. And those are the main two things. And if those could be balanced out well, where you're able to hit your shots, you end up in a really good spot. So there's two different damage profiles for this. Obviously, if you have the base weapon and then you have the hollow point rounds, I have them here as side by side comparison. The one on the left is the base rounds. If you don't have anything special on them and then the hollow point are on the right side. The weird part about this is you get three damage profiles, which is very similar to a lot of SMGs. You get the base one, which is primarily limbs, and then you get the body, which is primarily the entire, when I say chest, it's the entire torso, um, and then you have the headshot. So pretty much if you're aiming for the center mass, you're going to be able to get more damage, and that's primarily where your damage is going to come from. And then you can probably mix up a limb and a headshot where it kind of balances out to these middle numbers. In core game modes, it's going to be four to seven shots. 
If you do manage to get the lower time to kill, you're going to get between three to five shots to kill. This is depending on how many shots you land in and how far the people are away, which we're going to talk about the ranges. It ends up being 162 milliseconds, which ends up being a hair slower than maybe the MP5 and right in line with maybe the Uzi um, for that closer range engagements. But as it gets a little bit further, you can see it's going to end up being in line with the MP5 a majority of the time. With Warzone, it's going to be 10 to 17 shots to kill. Mix in some headshots, you can lower that time to kill. You can see you get some pretty long time to kills, but those are very comparable to Warzone, which we'll see. Um, we have the hollow point rounds. This is a two round burst, and then it does 32 um, to the pretty much the limbs only. If you shoot them in the stomach, you're going to get these damage profiles. The upper chest, you're going to get these profiles, and then the headshots, you're going to get this one. So you can see it does a lot of damage. And I think this is going to end up probably be broken the same way the striker was only if you're using it in core game modes with stopping power, because if you hadn't had a chance to try that out, I'll definitely recommend it on the striker. This one still ends up being a very lethal weapon. And I think if you combine it with the stopping power, you can kind of take it over the top where it's almost always going to be a one burst. I don't think hollow point rounds are as practical because you only get 12 bullets. It means you can only fire six times. So it requires a huge amount of skill which I don't think is very practical for a majority of the player base, especially when you're using this close quarters, you primarily want to be able to hit fire it, spray and pray, and hopefully you land those shots, but to each their own. When it comes to core game, core game modes, it's going to be three to four shots. If you get a headshot thrown in, it will drop that down, so you'll end up killing in one burst, but most of the time it's going to be in two bursts, depending on the range, if you're not hitting upper chest shots and a headshot combined. With Warzone, you can see that it's going to be up to 10 shots to kill, um, even if you get some headshots mixed in there, that means you got to land about half of your shots or half of those bursts, and then you'll be able to get the down on a player. And it'll be a little bit more of a struggle in multiple squads where it's two, three, or four compared to just 1v1s. And how the range is applied, this is the base damage range. If you're talking about just the base damage without the hollow point, you're going to get a damage drop off of 11, 18, 22, and it kind of just continues all the way down. The monolithic suppressor gives you that 8-ish percent increase in range. The ZLR Sabre is going to give you that 20-ish percent. The Apex Barrel gives you 35%. Deadfall, pretty much the exact same, but it has the integrated suppressor with the slower ADS. So you can't really stack this with anything so it kind of combines a couple of these attachments in my opinion it doesn't give you the exact thing because you could probably stretch it out a little bit further if you want the mono and the apex you would get a couple extra meters out of it but for me i don't think it's all that practical unless you're also trying to get a little bit of that recoil control out of it as well when you compare that to the hollow point round you're getting the same percentage increase but the ranges are significantly further we got 20 to 38 meters only two damage drop off ranges because there's only three damage values um, you can see it kind of continues all the way up, very consistent stats all the way across the board. And that's pretty much how those ones work. Uh, and if this is the first time on the channel, you haven't seen my breakdown where I compare the side to side between time to kill and distance. But let me go ahead and explain it for you. I have the time to kill on the left here in milliseconds and the distance in meters on the bottom. And most of your engagements with an SMG are really going to be below 25 meters. So that's kind of the imaginary line we're looking at right in the middle. And then when we look over here, if uh, these top two lines are for Warzone and the bottom two lines are for core game modes. So if you're a fan of either, or if you just want to know both, you can kind of pay attention as I go along. And you can see that their time to kill is very close. They're almost identical all the way up to about 12 and a half meters. And you can see the blue line. I end up having it for the vector, but it's for the Fennec. Uh, I just I thought it would be called the vector when I had it already ready to go in my chart. But pretty much you can see it kind of outdoes it there. And then they swap places and then they're pretty much tied all the way up to about 25 meters. So I think all the way up to 25 meters in core game modes, you're pretty much dealing with the same weapon. And as they drop off, it looks like the, the new Fennec ends up being a little bit better than the MP5, but this is a negligible difference. You might notice in very few engagements, for the most part, you're dealing with a similar gun that has a very fast fire rate of about 1100 rounds per minute. So you're going to burn through ammo a lot quicker, especially if you're not on target, you can end up wasting a lot of bullets. Same thing when we go into war zone, you can see they're pretty much tied up until the same distance. And then the gap kind of spreads out a little bit further, but pretty much the entire time in war zone, you're almost better off using the vector. It really just depends on how good are you going to be at controlling that sideways recoil. That's a little bit different than we're used to. And then on top of that, you have five less bullets and you do not have the option for the 30 round mag that you can put on the MP5 if you're comfortable with that, which will also push out the range. This is probably the closest comparison. I think it'll end up doing fairly well, be very competitive. I don't think it'll overtake the meta. Um, just because I think more people are just comfortable with the MP5, but I think you're not putting yourself in a disadvantage if you decide to go with the Fennec 
which is available to all players. Now let's go ahead and focus on the different class setups. If you only want to worry about recoil control, you could always go with the compensator or something like that. Personally, I'm going to go with the Deadfall Barrel just because it has the integrated suppressor, helps with damage range, bullet velocity. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit slower, which we kind of talked about, but I think it's worth the penalty com considering that you'd have to combine two other attachments. So this allows you to save an attachment that you could put towards another attachment. Maybe you want a sight, slide a hand, maybe another mobility attachment. You get the freedom to do that. Um, like I said on the chart, the, the range of foregrip is probably the best one if you're trying to hit targets at range because it's going to minimize that recoil as much as possible. But overall, I think the Merc is a great way to go, especially since you're going to be up close a lot of the times when you're using SMG. And this will help with that hip fire accuracy, but still giving you a little bit of that vertical recoil control. Ammo, I would go with the 40 round drum mag, unless you want to have like a little bit of a gimmick, mess around, maybe try some stopping power with this and do the hollow point rounds. That's going to feel very strong but it's very unforgiving if you miss a shot, you get penalized pretty hard. Um, so I would go with the 40 round drum mag and then, and here's where you can kind of play with the attachments. Those are the main three that I would use. And then if you want to have a little bit more recoil control, go with the rubberized grip and then maybe combine that with sleight of hand. If you want a little bit faster aim down sight and go with stipple grip tape, if that's not fast enough for you, you could drop slide of hand. You can go with the Forge Tac CQS, which helps you with an additional frame, which ends up being around 17 milliseconds. If we want to even faster and we can control the recoil, you can go with that no stock attachment or no stock and then combine that with rubberize. It's really going to come down to what your overall preferences are. Personally, what I would use is a stipple grip tape and I would just use slide of hand or I would use the one milliwatt laser, just get a little bit tighter hip fire spread. But overall, that would be my go-to class setup. And that is for multiplayer or for Warzone. Because obviously when you use this in Warzone, you kind of get the best of both worlds. Because this will take care of those shorter ranges of below 25 meters. And then the rifle will take care of everything 25 meters and above. Hopefully you did enjoy the video, found it helpful in some way. If you did, please remember to hit that like button. And if you're brand new, looking to find your way back because you like these types of breakdowns, make sure you do subscribe with notifications on. And if you guys are interested, I do another video of me going through all the various challenges and giving some tips and tricks along the way, even though those are very aligned with a lot of the other SMGs that have already been in the game. Appreciate all the support on the channel. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.